All right, and we are back with the second half of this game, the third place match for the 20, uh, 2017 home season, season 13 from Ad Roland Dolls between the Reservoir Dolls and the Unholy Rollers. I'm Rich Mahogany. And I'm Quilla DeVille, but you can call me Quill. An update on the score, the Unholy Rollers left us with 113 points and Reservoir Dolls with 115. So very close game happening here so far. These teams very closely matched. They did face each other earlier in the game, or earlier in the season, uh, when the Unholy Rollers faced off against the Res Dolls, came out on top 207 to 159. But Reservoir Dolls looking to take the win here as we get back into the action. Sassbot wearing the Jammer Star for the Reservoir Dolls, jamming against Tango de Muerte for the Unholy Rollers in red. Res Dolls definitely giving it to Tango de Muerte, holding her back there with everything they've got. Nice, strong defense. And a good quad brace up at the front of the pack for the on Unholy Rollers. Really uh, putting ta uh, Sass spot to task. Sass trying to push forward, just not quite happening, although you know, we're going to see Splatter Alice needing to break off to bridge the pack as things are getting a little spread out there. No lead jammer yet decided. Tango de Muerte now taking up position at the front of the pack against the Red Stalls defense. Lip Smacker breaking off the bridge. We are, we are now more than halfway through this first jam. No lead jammer yet decided. Looks like we've got 8-9-9-0. Oh, Frankie Fatal going to the box for a penalty. Maybe this will give Unholy Rollers Jammer a chance to have one blocker down. Oh, Tango de Muerte does push through. However, takes a bit of a spill to the infield. Does not get the jam. Looks like we've got Miss Mechanic also in going into the box. This puts Resdals down two blockers. And Frankie now with, about to join them. with 15 seconds left to play in this jam, Tango de Muerte takes lead jam for the Unholy Rollers. Going to come around to the pack quick, see if she can. Looks like we've got some confusion out on the track. Nobody I really knowing what's going on. Saw multiple jammers being pointed at. But, uh, but what I can tell you about that is it looks like no points were scored. We do have a bit of a zebra huddle in the middle. But unofficially, it looks like no points scored on that last pass. We've got or some on that coaches out game. there as well. Maybe we're getting a, a review. Let's see what happens here. Well, we do have an official review called for by the Unholy Rollers. So we will hear back from them what the review is all about and what the results are as soon as we can get that information. In the meantime, let's thank some of our sponsors. Absolutely. Let's thank Vintage Brewery. Vintage Brewery Company, home of the original Derby Girl ESB beer, brewed in honor of the hard-hitting skaters of roller derby. They invite us all to stop by with their family-owned brew pub for a fantastic meal served alongside of one of their award-winning brews. You know, that's exactly what I would love after a long game. It's just a nice uh, brew. Oh, uh, <laughs> most definitely. I was actually there for dinner last night. Mm. Having and, and that that sponsorship read, it does not lie. The food is fantastic, the beer is amazing, the ambiance is great, and you get to see all of their brewing equipment uh, right behind their uh, their glass wall. It's a fun place. It's highly recommend it. Very cool. If you guys are folk, if you are interested in it, check it out. It is located on Whitney Way. On the west side of Madison. So taking a look at some of the numbers we have during this official review, uh, Shenanigans, the high-scoring jammer for the Unholy Rollers with 43 points to her name. Mouse, the high-scoring jammer for the Reservoir Dolls with 38. Taking a look at some of the other jammers, Tenacious D for the Reservoir Dolls, close behind Mouse for points. She's got 36 points uh, over on the side of the Unholy Rollers. Next high-scoring jammer is Ginger Snap with 41. So the high-scoring jammers for both teams are, are pretty close. Seems like they've got a solid rotation going on with, uh, with some quite skilled jammers. Taking a look at the penalties, we see a uh, high of four for each on each side. Scarlet Osnaria with four for the Unholy Rollers. Chris Rago with four for the Reservoir Dolls. Chris, a visiting skater from Windy City, uh, helping to round out the roster for the Reservoir Dolls in this, uh, in this grudge match 
between the Unholy Rollers and Res Dolls, fighting for third place in season 13 of the Mad Rollin' Dolls. Yeah, got quite a long official review here. I'm interested to see what the call is. It looks like we do see the captains conferring up there. There's still discussion happening as you see a. Uh, so there, there, there you can see on our screen our, uh, our captains for these teams. Zebras off to the side, off screen. Now there, now you can see them towards the right hand side of your screen, conferring. So usually when they're huddled down like that, it means that something's close. Mm -hmm. And as soon as they, uh, they've come to a decision, we'll get that information and pass it on to you. In the meantime, I'd like to shout out to our sponsor, Paps Blue Ribbon. Paps Blue Ribbon proudly sponsors the Mad Rollin' Dolls. So PDR yourself, ASAP. What'll you have? Paps Blue Ribbon. So a little bit of reminder here uh, for those of you who might be interested in more derby action at following this game. We do have uh, this is the second of three games in a triple header happening tonight. I know you're you're airing you're watching this after the fact, uh, but you can you know go and watch the next game on YouTube. That will be the championship game between the Quad Squad and the Vaudeville Vixens. Vaudeville Vixens currently undefeated this season. Quad Squad, the champions of the last season, only having lost once this season to the Vaudeville Vixens. It's going to be a very good championship game, and most importantly, the coveted leggy, which is a plastic leg, is what the teams are actually looking for. Yep. Leggy, the leg of champions, a long standing tradition here in the uh, Mad Rollin' Dolls. Sounds like we're getting hype out there on the house mic. Absolutely. I hope you guys can get at least a taste of that. If you're, if it sounds awesome and fun, let me tell you, it is. I strongly recommend you come down and check out uh, some more bouts when our 2018 uh, home season kicks off. Absolutely. That'll be, uh, and counterintuitively perhaps, we do start our seasons. So 2018 will start at the end of 2017, but still in 2017. <laughs> So that usually happens around December, so you can keep track of us uh, on social media. Uh, check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And you can also check out our website at madisonrollerderby.org, where you can keep track of when we're playing and come join us uh, for our future games. Absolutely. If you've never been to a roller derby game live, I would definitely say you've got to check it out. The atmosphere is amazing. Lots of great people out here that just want to have a good time. The energy is also just a wonderful place, friends, family, kids, all the people of all ages are all welcome. We've got lots of food, we've got lots of people. It's just a good atmosphere. Yeah, can, cannot recommend it enough. All right, so it does look like our, uh, our officials have completed their review. So we'll, uh, once that message gets passed over, we'll have that to you momentarily. But it looks like we are just about ready to get things back underway on the track. Looks like we've got some points in there as well. Oh, yeah, so it does. We see five points added to the Unholy Rollers score. That does mean they take the lead. So Unholy Rollers now 118, Reservoir Dolls 115, clock stopped at 27 minutes, 29 seconds remaining in this game. So as far as home season action, we are drawing down to the close of it. However, the Dairyland Dolls, our chartered travel team for the Mad Rollin' Dolls, isn't done yet as the playoff season is just kicking off. Uh, Dairyland Dolls recently came back from a tournament in South Carolina, the Southern Discomfort Tournament, where they performed fairly well there. Took a few wins, took a few losses. Uh -huh. um, however, they will be playing uh, in dates coming up. They will be playing in Chicago against Windy City on May 20th. They will also be playing, uh, they will be traveling to Milwaukee for the Midwest Brew Ha Ha uh, tournament during the third and fourth, hosted by the Brew City Bruisers. And following that, they will be traveling to Philadelphia for the East Coast Derby Extravaganza, also known as ECDX, June 23rd, 24th, and 25th, hosted by Philly Roller Derby. Looks like we're about to go back into this jam. We've got Res Dolls throwing Mouse back in as their jammer. And Unholy Rollers is going to have Fang Dangles. Res Dolls also starting off with two blockers in the box. However, one's standing, so hopefully they shoot right back in there. Waiting on that unofficial review still. 
All right, and looks like the, as far as gameplay is concerned, the official review has ended. We are ready to get back into the action. Like I said, we'll pass you that information as regarding the official review momentarily. Like Fang Dangled is out first to take lead jam for the Unholy Rollers. Mouse also through the pack, not your lead jammer. Fang Dangled finding an inside lane, calls off the jam, four points, holding Reservoir Dolls down to zero. We've got four points on for Unholy Rollers, zero Reservoir Dolls. Score now Reservoir Dolls 115, Unholy Rollers 121. All right, I've got the unofficial review. I'm going to give it a stab here. It looks like we've got, there was a no pack with the black skater, and then the last blocker did not, or the last blocker, excuse me, did not follow, pushed off the bench, and the red jammer did not get any points awarded. So that's what we were looking at there with that unofficial review. Okay. So kind of confusing one, not very normal, so took a minute yeah. to figure it out. Well, thank you very much for getting us that information, getting back down to the action on the track. We're seeing Nat Splat wearing the Jammer Star for the Reservoir Dolls in black, jamming against Gertrude Awakening for the Unholy Rollers in red. Gertrude Awakening through to take lead jam for the Unholy Rollers. Nat Splat apparently still stuck up with a full blocking force, a braced wall, a blocktopus, if you will. Eight limbs a swing and looking to hold back that Jammer. Splat does get through, does a little bit of a turn, tries to stay vertical, doesn't quite make it. Is forced to recycle back into the pack. Starting to fill up our penalty box here. We've got two from the Unholy Rollers, Hell Woods and Bada Boom Box, both in there. And then Restall's also sending in. That's Block Nest Monster sitting in the box for the Res Dolls. Looks like the jam has reached its conclusion. Let's see, five points up for the Reservoir Dolls, zero for, or I'm sorry, five for the Unholy Rollers, zero for the Reservoir Dolls. Unholy Rollers slowly spreading out this lead. Only 11 points, though. We've and seen bigger jams. That we have it is sure to change. As we go on down to the track for this next jam, Tenacious D, number 333, jamming for the Reservoir Dolls. We've got Ginger Snap, number 617, jamming for the Unholy Rollers. Whistles are flying. We've got Lip Smacker heading to the penalty box for the Reservoir Dolls. In the meantime, Tenacious D through for lead jam for the Reservoir Dolls. Got a nice big hit there, Unholy Rollers. Ginger Snap falling down, but popping right back up. Resdal's defense is very strong today. Well, they're gonna have to be in order to keep back this unholy river of power flowing forth, going for that third place spot. Ginger Snap and Tenacious D also having both 41 points scored so far this, this bout, so we'll see which one can get some more points up than their total. Well, well, it looks like Ginger Snap won't be adding any more to their total this jam, as she has passed on the star to Micro Baller, pivot for the Unholy Rollers. Mikey has now donned the Jammer Star, is looking to score some points as she comes around and uses that, you know, that speed she had coming up around the first turn to her advantage. However, she's knocked out, looks like by Chris Rago for the uh, Reservoir Dolls. There she goes. She does find that outside line. Gets four points up for the res or for the unholy rollers. Resdal jammer tenacious D going to call off the jam. You see four points up that pass for tenacious D. Zero for the unholy rollers. Grand total of 14 points for the reservoir dolls. Four points unholy rollers. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a one point game. That was a strongly jammed jam for Tenacious D, who has now become the lead scorer for not only her team, but for this game so far. Sitting with 50 points, shenanigans on the Unholy Rollers with 43. A little bit of confusion there on the track. We had Lady Hoo-Ha with the jammer panty on, however, called off by the track by her teammates and coach. Not seeing a jammer in the box, but maybe one too many players. 
And we do see Tango de Muerte taking lead jam for the Unholy Rollers, getting through for a grand slam. Pack just sitting tight at the, uh, just before the first turn. Tango de Muerte getting through the pack like it's not even there. Picks up another five points. So now I'm seeing a red, or I'm seeing a black and white star, Tenacious D, back on the track as the jammer for the Reservoir Dolls. She must have picked up a late penalty at the end of that last jam. And Tenacious D now through on her initial pass. She will now be eligible to score points, but Tango de Muerte through for four. Ain't gonna be having any of that calls off the jam. Going to spur a timeout being called by the Reservoir Dolls. Now, folks watching at home, we, when you see the jammers take that lap, it might look like a short lap, and you're wondering, why are they so tired? Let me tell you, as someone who has been a jammer a couple times, it is exhausting pushing through a pack of very strong athletes. And jamming is one of those things that you really got to have that power to push through and get through that tight pack. Well, and it's so impressive to see You've got a single jammer pushing away against a wall of three or four people who are braced against each other, digging in their toe stops, and the jammer is still making headway. Absolutely. Like that, that's just incredible. And just really a testament to how much strength and athleticism is required to be able to play this game of roller derby. Absolutely. So as we go into, or still in this time out for the Reservoir Dolls, take a moment to thank another one of our sponsors, Chocolate Shop Ice Cream. This is the best ice cream made in Wisconsin, and it tastes so good because it has gobs of rich Wisconsin cream, tons of real ingredients for boatloads of luscious flavors. That means it's not low fat, low calorie, or low anything, <laughs> and that's why everyone loves it. You want nutrition, eat carrots. <laughs> Looks like we've got a timeout. Since we are lining back up, officials might be taking a moment now. As we're getting ready for the official review, it looks like Loch Ness Monster getting talked to by one of the zebras. Uh, Loch, Loch Ness one of, is the, uh, the captain for the Reservoir Dolls, so it makes sense that any information might want to go through her. I love the name. Sometimes they trip me up, but I love them. Another shout out here to Fast Forward Skate Center, Madison's number one roller skating rink. You can join them all year round for open roller skating, birthday parties, and private parties. A full concession stand and arcade is available, and don't forget, Fast Forward Skate Center is the official practice facility of the Mad Rolling Dolls. Oh, so we got Lady Hoo Ha sitting there at the line getting the cheer section going. Looks like she might have been thinking about start breaking into dance, something that Lady Hoo-Ha is kind of known for, dancing on the jammer line during these timeouts, but the whistle sounds saying, time to skate, she's all business. Lady Hoo-Ha is gonna be jamming against Fang Dangled. And right away, it looks like she picked up a forearm penalty there for, uh, for Lady Hoo-Ha. So Lady Hoo-Ha sitting down in the penalty box. This gives Fang Dangled and the Unholy Rollers a power jam. Van Dangled pushing herself through there. Fang Dangled wants to oh, be no. like Lady Hoo-Ha though, apparently. Gets that uh, that forearm penalty, off to the penalty box she goes. This will release Lady Hoo-Ha. So really, and Fang Dangled will only have to serve the amount of time that Lady Hoo-Ha serves, so she'll be back on the track pretty quickly. However, that does mean that we will not have a lead jammer in this jam, and it will go the full two minutes. Lady Hoo-Ha getting a little bit of offense from her res doll blockers. We've got Fang Dangle jumping right back in. Lady Hoo-Ha threw for a grand slam, five points for the Reservoir Dolls. Fang Dangle, like you said, back on the track, now has completed her scoring pass, eligible to start scoring points as Lady Hoo-Ha is through for another grand slam. We've got 45 seconds left on this jam. No one's going to be able to call it, as you mentioned earlier. Both jammers get penalties. That means we're going the whole two minutes. Uh, Fang Dangle really meeting with some fierce uh, resistance in the form of the Reservoir Dolls defense. She's just now getting through on that first scoring pass of hers. 
four points up for Fang Dangled and the Unholy Rollers. Our Lady Hoo-Ha also through the pack, picking up four points of her own as the jam clock dwindles down. Looks like we'll have time for wow. one more pass. Did you see that Lady Hoo-Ha sliding uh, right on the outside of that entire pack? Nice footwork on her half, getting all the points. That was incredibly well played there by Lady Hoo-Ha. And they're once again proving that the announcer curse is a thing. I said that she will likely get through for the last pass. Lady hoo -Ha's like, no, I'm gonna go for two more. So great jam there for Lady Hoo-Ha. 21 points up for the Reservoir Dolls. Six for the Unholy Rollers. And this brings the Reservoir Dolls back into the lead with 154 points to Unholy Rollers, 150. We are at just under 20 minutes remaining to play. Absolutely. We've got Mouse back out on the track for Res Dolls as our jammer. And Unholy Rollers with Gertrude Awakening. All right, so Mouse is now through to take lead jam for the Reservoir Dolls. Gertrude Awakening now through on the outside, eligible to start scoring points. Mouse taking a little bit of, having a little bit of trouble getting through that pack. She is gonna get through, calls off the jam. Four points up for the Reservoir Dolls, zero on Holy Rollers. That brings our score to our Reservoir Dolls, 158, Unholy Rollers, 150. So Mouse has had lead jammer five out of the seven jams that she's been in tonight. Thank you for watching the Mad Rollin' Dolls. All right, looking back down to the action on the track, we're gonna have Tango de Muerte wearing the jammer star for the Unholy Rollers in red. She'll be jamming against Nat Splat on the Reservoir Dolls, wearing the black star. Nat Splat through for a quick lead jam for the Reservoir Dolls. Tango de Muerte also through the pack. Looking to close up that distance quickly as Nat Splat comes around. Gets into the midst of a quite hairy pack, forced to call off the jam. Picks up two points, but does hold the Unholy Rollers down to zero. Absolutely, Black Ness Monster not letting her through, no matter what, really holding her space on that last jam. Uh, Block Ness, a fearsome jammer on the track. Don't want to make the mistake of thinking that she doesn't exist because you haven't seen a good photo. <laughs> but there are, there are a lot of really good photos of Block Ness out there. So really, if you don't believe she exists, that's all on you, your mistake. All right, we've got Res Dolls with Tenacious D. We've got, and then Unholy Rollers with Ginger Snap. Tenacious D, 54 points of this game. Snap as that lead jammer now lapping Tenacious D as Tenacious D dealing with a bit of tenacious defense from Shenanigans, her former teammate uh, who recently transferred over to the Unholy Rollers. Tenacious D though does get by, is eligible to score points. However, Ginger Snap not going to have any of that, gets four points of her own, calls off the jam giving her a grand total of nine for that last jam, holding the Reservoir Dolls to zero, and we are back at a one-point game on Holy Rollers trailing at 159, the Reservoir Dolls 160. We've got 16 minutes and 30-some seconds to play. Oh my God, Quill. It's gonna be a nail-biter. Oh nail -biter. my God, Quill. <laughs> <laughs> this is, we're seeing some fantastic roller derby unfold in front of us. We're gonna see Fang Dangled wearing the Jammer Star for the Unholy Rollers jamming up against Lady Hoo-Ha for the Reservoir Dolls. Lady Hoo-Ha being our unexpected jammer, we can always see something exciting from her, whether it's an apex jump or having the packs race. Let's see what she gives us this time around. And she is through as the lead jammer as she approaches the pack, takes a bit of a hit from Hello Sailor, falls to the outside. This will give Fang Dangle the chance to catch up. Not if Lady Hoo-Ha has anything to do with it. Calls the jam giving us a two points for Unholy Rollers and four points for Reservoir Dolls. Again, folks, we are at 161 with Unholy Rollers and 164 with Res Dolls. Nobody's getting tired, nobody's giving way. We are definitely gonna be down to the final jam on this game. Oh, I, I cannot wait. I, I, if, if only this, this game could go forever. I don't think the skaters themselves would appreciate that, but 
I'm having a blast watching this. We're going to see what Mouse brings to the table as she wears the Jammer Star for the Reservoir Dolls, going up against Gertrude Awakening for the Unholy Rollers. Mouse fighting through that pack. Wow, and she just pushed straight through that four brace of the Unholy Rollers, broke it up herself, got through, picks up lead jam for the Reservoir Dolls. You know, one of my favorite things about roller derby is that size really doesn't matter. You've got all types of people out there. Mouse being one of those people that is just so powerful and breaks through those walls, does it right there again. Going around for her second pass. All five points. Mouse has just such incredible footwork. Being able to, there she goes, oh, barely going out of bounds. But then right back into the track, finds the hole on the inside, through for another five points. Gertrude Awakening has now broken free of the pack, who's now eligible to score points. Mouse coming up quick on the pack. Quick spin around to get those points as she calls off the jam, checking for the jam ref for her points. Resdahl's taking a little bit of a lead. 10 points for Mouse on that one. Looks like the unholy rollers were held down to zero on that jam. Definitely a up and as four more points are added to the Reservoir Dolls total, so that is up 14 for that last jam. And the Reservoir Dolls score to 178 over the Unholy Rollers, 162. We've got Res Dolls out there starting off with Sasbot as the jammer and the Unholy Rollers singing, sending Tango de Muero again. Tango de Muerte finds the wide open lane on the outside, takes quick lead jam for the Unholy Rollers. Sassbot skating backwards on the outside, not wearing that jammer star, so she's been recycled back, just aggressively pummeling away at the back defense of the Unholy Rollers. But the Unholy Rollers are holding strong. Hello Sailor, Skullsby Kraken, Shenanigans, and Splatter Alice doing the work. Absolutely, we just saw Nat Splat coming back into the pack. Tango De Huerte does get through for a grand slam. Looks a little, little beaten up after that last pass. Sasspot almost through, just barely had to be let go by Shenanigans. You see there, they had to look for another for a moment. It's like, oh, are you going to hit me? Oh, guns couldn't hit her. <laughs> Calls off the jam as far as Sasspot can get some points. All right, so it looks like we've got nine points up for the Unholy Rollers, zero for the Reservoir Tolls. This game just keeping it close. Unholy Rollers only seven points behind the Reservoir Dolls as we have 12 minutes and 28 seconds remaining to play. We've got nothing but smiles and laughs out on the track. Everyone just having a good time, but really wanting to win that third place spot. Oh, oh, Ginja Snap takes the Jam Star for the Reservoir Dolls. Almost through, gets recycled to the back of the pack by Blockneck Monster. That's going to allow Tenacious D an opportunity to get through. Takes lead Jam for the Reservoir Dolls. Tenacious D does get through. Oh no, not enough though to get a penalty. Tenacious D going to the box on a back block. Oh, that will give Ginja Snap and the Unholy Rollers a power jam. Perfect opportunity to take the lead back from the Reservoir Dolls. Ginge through, does have to get by Slyonide for the Reservoir Dolls. Does pick up that five point Grand Slam. Works on re-engaging the pack. As you can see her team there initially lining up on the outside. Now rushing in to break up that Reservoir Dolls wall. And it works for him. Through for five points is Ginge Snap. Tenacious G rejoining the pack right behind Ginger Snap. Ginger Snap knocked to the inside by Block Ness as Tenacious D back through the pack picks up a five point grand slam of her own. Ginger Snap trying to call off the jam from the floor. But I do not believe she's lead jam. Yeah. So Tenacious D through, picks up four points. Junior Snap really fighting, knocking down a couple blockers, just trying to get to the front of that pack and get out of there. Yeah, it looked like there had been a little confusion called there because uh, 
Ginge was signaled from the bench to call off the jam. However, it had been Tenacious D that was the lead jammer uh, who was prior to going to the penalty box. So a great job by Ginger Snap picking up that initial 10 points. But now Tenacious D just going to town in the last seconds of that jam. Wow. Picks up 19 points to the Unholy Rollers 13. A very close jam, but Reservoir Dolls managing to hold on to the lead despite losing lead jam and giving a power jam over to the Unholy Rollers. Folks, we've got just a little bit under 10 minutes. Uh, Unholy Rollers with 184 and Res Dolls with 197. It really is anyone's game at this point. We've got Unholy Rollers with Fen Dangold as the jammer and Res Dolls sending out Lady Hoo Ha. Fang Dangle pushes her way to the front of the pack, juking left and right by the Dress Dolls defense. Does get through to take lead jam, but Lady Hoo Ha is out and fastly closing the distance. They are like the, and there we go. There's the track, or there's the pack just racing around the track now. Everyone not wanting to be a point, trying to get out of the way. Fang Dangle gets through, calls off the jam, gets her four points. However, Lady Hoo Ha and the Reservoir Dolls do end up picking up two. So we do see the Unholy Rollers trailing now by 11 points with only nine minutes remaining in this game. It's a nail biter. We've got Res Doll sending back out Mouse and Unholy Roller sending out Gertrude Awakening. Mouse trying to just push her way through up the center of the Unholy Roller's defense. Mouse sneaking out the outside, really just passing by everyone, taking lead jammer status. Gertrude Awakening still pushing away at the back of the pack. Meanwhile, Mouse comes around, barrels into the center of the pack. Doesn't manage to stay on her skates, but she is back up quickly. Through on the inside for a Grand Slam Reservoir Dolls. Not the most graceful initial impact, but she definitely snuck right about around them. Well, points is points. And we're gonna see what Gertrude Awakening can do now that she is through on her initial pass, eligible to score points. Mouse having to go all the way back. Oh, Calls yeah. off the jam. Yeah, Mouse with good track awareness there. She was pushed out, looked over, saw like, oh, you're coming to score points. I think I'll end the jam. <laughs> so you can see here in their instant replay, you know, Mouse deftly dodging a hit by Splatter Alice and then gets around shenanigans to get that lead jam for that last jam. Very well played there. That does bring the score total up to uh, Unholy Rollers, 188, Reservoir Dolls, 206. Right now we've got Res Doll sitting out Nat Splat and Unholy Rollers sitting out Tingle de Muerto. Just a little bit over seven minutes left in this game. Nat Splat takes the lead jam. Tango de Muerte knocked to the outside, forced to recycle back. Happening again as they're coming around turn one. Nat Splat fighting her way through. She does get forced to recycle to the back by Micro Mauler. Both jammers really fighting through that pack, trying to figure out a hole that they can escape through, grab their points. And Nat Splat finds it first, takes lead jammer status, gets all five points. So both jammers are approaching the pack. Nat's gonna call off the jam as she enters it. Looks like three points up for the Reservoir Dolls. Holding the Unholy Rollers down to zero. Score now eight points, Reservoir Dolls. Zero Unholy Rollers. We have 188 for Unholies, 214 for Reservoir Dolls. Six minutes, 22 seconds remain. You are watching the Mad Rollin' Dolls Championship Grudge Match Bout of Season 13. All right, as we come back into this next jam, Ginger Snap wearing the Jammer Star for the Unholy Rollers in red, jamming against Tenacious D for the Reservoir Dolls in black. Both of these jammers, the top scorers for their teams. Tenacious D with 73 points, Ginger Snap with 63, but Ginger Snap out first for that lead jam for the Unholy Rollers. Ginger Snap fighting through that wall of blockers. 
That, that Res Dahl's defense just not willing to give an inch. We've got Ginger Snap now getting through on the inside for a hard fought grand slam. Nice assist there from Hell Woods as a blocker, giving her a little bit of a whiff on the corner there. And apparently we missed a Tenacious D took a little trip to the penalty box. Uh, so has served 30 seconds, is now back on the track. So Ginger Snap trying to get through. Oh wow, nice hit there by Shenanigans on Tenacious D. Forcing her to the infield. She is going to pick up a penalty for her troubles though. Both jammers sent back to the back of the pack. But we see Tenacious D sliding in backwards, getting those points. Very nice job staying in bounds and on her skates, dodging that hit by Mike Romaller. Great job by Tenacious D. Taking a look at the, the score. Nine points up for the Unholy Rollers. Res Dolls held to zero. Unholy Rollers are now 197 to Reservoir Dolls, 214, with under five minutes remaining to play. This is amazing. So things are, you know, like the Reservoir Dolls are not are by no means secure in a victory here. They are certainly leading by a not inconsequential number of points, but again, the points that separate these teams are one jam away from turning things around. We just saw a little jammer on jammer action there, both fighting each other. We've got Lady Hoo-Ha in for Res Dolls, as well as Fang Dangle in for Unholy Rollers, but Lady Hoo-Ha taking lead jammer status, coming back around to the pack. Dangled only just now getting by the Reservoir Dolls pivot, Chris Rago. So she's now eligible to score a point as Lady Hoo-Ha is through picking up four points. Lady Hoo-Ha going to call it. Now it looks like she was thinking about it for a while there, whether or not it was going to get called. But she did end up calling it. Four points for the Reservoir Dolls. Unholy Rollers held to zero. And the Unholy Rollers are going to burn a timeout here. Let's take a minute to thank some of our sponsors again. Let's talk about Paula Riley Design. Looking to collaborate with a graphic designer on your next project? Well, we'll turn to Paula Riley Design. Go to www.paularileydesign.com today for all your needs. So we thank you very much, uh, Paula Riley, for your, for your sponsorship of the Mad Roman Dogs. So taking a look, so. Taking a minute to take it all in. Take a minute to breathe here. Mm -hmm. So we are at, what is that like, like, like what, 21 points? between these teams. Three minutes, 37 minutes remain on the clock. It's, it's anyone's it, game it's, at this point. It's, it's so good. We're gonna see, so the Reservoir Dolls put up Mouse to Jam. Unholy Rollers, having just taken a timeout, are going to be sending up Gertrude Awakening. And we've seen throughout this entire game up and down with the points. There's never really been a clear cut lead. So this really is gonna get down to that very last jam of what's gonna happen. So we'll see here now. So Mouse up, uh, she's been, she's at 63 points scored this game. Gertrude Awakening, five. So you, we see the Unholy Rollers bracing up there. We got Critical Tits up there trying to break up the wall for Mouse. She succeeds, Mouse is through for lead jam for the Reservoir Dolls. Gertrude Awakening still fighting through. There she goes. Mouse calls it before Gertrude Awakening can do anything, though. Mouse happy, it looks like, with what she made that call there for. Yeah, so, so this is going to be the Reservoir Dolls' strategy for the next three minutes. Is just, so, all right, so now we have another timeout being, being called. We uh, wait for confirmation on who that is. Now, folks, if you're watching at home, sometimes it is better to just do a real quick jam, get your points, and get out of there before you can even let the other team's jammer do anything. However, sometimes people want to run the clock on the other side, yep. and they want to go for that full two minutes to get more points. That's right. So we do have like that hit it and quit it style is mm -hmm. really kind of becoming the Res Dolls' bread and butter here as the clock winds down. But as you said, if they can just get lead jam and lock down the opposing jammer, they're going to be happy to burn out that clock because three minutes remain. We, we may get two jams. We may get three. 
but there is not much time left to play. The Unholy Rollers need to be able to come through, take those lead jams, maybe try to bait some track cut penalties Absolutely. out of the Reservoir Dolls, get those power jams, but they're not gonna make it easy. The, the penalties for both of these teams are looking pretty low and good. Reservoir Dolls are starting to get up there in some cases. Chris Rago is at six, so she's really the only one in the danger zone there. One more and she's going to be out, but otherwise we're not seeing much more than uh, the one, two, three penalties for the Reservoir Dolls. Things looking much better over on the Unholy Rollers side of things. But we are ready to get back down to the action. Nat Splat wears the Jammer Star for the Reservoir Dolls, jamming against Tango de Muerte for the Unholy Rollers. Unholy Rollers really need to get some lead Jammer status because the last three jams they have gotten zero points and it looks like, like you said, Res Dolls are calling it before they get a chance. And there we go, Tango de Muerte gets that lead jam, exactly what they're looking for. They are, and the uh, Unholy Rollers defense still holding back Nat Splat. She has not completed her initial pass. She is pushing away at the back of the pack here. You can see at the right-hand side of her screen. However, she's not wearing a jammer cover. Not sure yet if that is a star stash or preparing a star pass. In the meantime, Tango De Muerte through for Grand Slam. We do have a star pass looking like it's going to 185. Supernova, <laughs> thank you, had a minute to read that. <laughs> yep. Supernova coming in there, trying to sneak in and get a couple points. Can she do it? Hell Woods really giving it to her. Uh, there she goes. So she is through, picks up four points for the Reservoir Dolls. Look at over to Tango de Muerte. She is through for a four point pass and is going to call off that jam. Give it a moment here to make sure the score gets properly updated, but it's looking like, all right, I think we, it's, we're gonna have nine points that last jam for the Unholy Rollers, four for the Reservoir Dolls. So that's like great, Unholy Rollers starting to chip away at that lead, but there's only one minute and 30 seconds remaining on the period clock. So they have like, the Unholy Rollers, the only method of time stopping they have at this point is to burn their official review. Reservoir Dolls sit, they have two penalty, or two timeouts left and their official review. As we're getting into what may well be the last jam. Who do we have jamming, Quill? Oh my goodness, we've got Res Dolls that have Tenacious D. Unholy Rollers are sending in Ginger Snap. The pack taking a big hit there. Ginger Snap taking the lead. Tenacious, Ginger Snap, excuse me, has less than a minute to get some points. Tenacious D right behind her though. Ginger Snap now engaging the pack. Gets through on the inside, almost unencumbered, but picks up a track oh. cut penalty. Oh, that may be the final nail in the coffin for the Unholy Rollers, as Tenacious D and the Reservoir Dolls now have a power jam with 37 seconds remaining on the clock. At this point, the jam will go the full two minutes. So it's all a matter of points at this point. It is not impossible for the Unholy Rollers to come back from this, but man, the Reservoir Dolls are not going to make this easy. That is five more points up for the Res Dolls by Tenacious D. Ginger Snap coming back out of the penalty block. She is our highest scoring jammer for the Unholy Rollers. Let's see if she can do some damage here in the last five seconds. So that is five more points up for Tenacious D. Tenacious D, the high point scorer for the Reservoir Dolls and in fact for this bout so far. So both teams putting up their high scoring jammers for this last jam. Clock dwindling away now at 23 seconds. Tenacious D through for another Grand Slam. So far, Unholy Rollers have been held scoreless since Ginger Snap returned from the penalty box. Tenacious D really just running the clock at this point, making her way through the pack. All right, and with that, the clock has expired. Four more points on that last jam for Tenacious D, bringing her score total up for that jam up to 24. Ladies and gentlemen, the unofficial score Unholy Rollers 206, Reservoir Dolls 250, but that's not going to change the result of this. Oh, Unholy Rollers did get two more points at the end there, of course, right as I said it. Uh -huh. But, ladies and gentlemen, 
your winners of the grudge match and third place finishers for the Mad Roland Dolls season 13, the Reservoir Dolls. So that is their taking their first win of the season. That's got to feel amazing. You can see them there grouping up for a victory cheer, and they will now be going out and taking their victory lap. And yes, we do have that final score. Final score is indeed on Holy Rollers 208, Reservoir Dolls 250. On Holy Rollers still keeping their head up high, though, not too far behind oh, there. That was an incredibly well fought game, and really, that, lap, like that extra 24 points that they are that they were behind by was all made up in that last jam by Tenacious Absolutely. D. Absolutely, we saw a nail-biter the whole time all until the very end. An incredibly hard-fought game by both of these teams. Tenacious D coming out as the top scorer of, of the game with 97 points. Ginger Snap behind her at 74 for the Unholy Rollers. And just... Wow, what, like, like, what an incredible game. And the energy here in the stadium is incredible. Everyone is so happy to have seen this game. Folks at home, this is what you're missing out on. Loud noises and a good time. Uh, well, well, we hope that you've had at least a fraction of as much fun as we've had up here. <laughs> because if, that, if you have, then we're good. We, we, we've done our job. So thank you all very much for joining us. If you'd like to check out more Roller Derby action, we have next the final game of this triple header for championships uh, for the Mad Roland Dolls 13th season. The match between the quad squad defending their title against the Vaudeville Vixens. So if you want to check that out, just skip on over to YouTube and you can see how the dramatic conclusion. Again, another nail biter, I guarantee it. Oh well. Well, once again, thank you all for joining us. I have been Rich Mahogany. And I'm Quill. Thank you so much. Have a great day.